But of course, your first film is Udan, uh, which was produced by Anurag Kashyap. Uh, you've been you've been around like for what 15 years almost before you made your first film. Um, to make it still an inspirational story, I mean, uh, what happened? It, things kind of just fell into place. I think that, again, there's a moment I wrote Udan immediately after after the sort of like after Bombay Talkies wasn't happening, and I was like, okay, this is. You figure, okay, you write a slightly kind of like scaled up film where you get a star and therefore it gets made. But of course, clearly that's not true in that in that moment. So I was like, okay, fine, I need to I need to figure out my life. And then what was so I was like, who am I? What the what's the stuff that I want to do? And I, I really I, and I really wanted to tell this kind of like coming of age. You want to scale it down? Is that was, was that something? Scale it down, but also just tell a coming of age story. Just felt that okay, you know, if I'm not being able to do the Bollywood thing, and I don't, I didn't want to do Bollywood. I didn't want to do song and dance and typical love story. Because I always felt that if you're not making your first film as an as an extension of your own self, then really, what is the point? If you're going to be a, a, a director for somebody else's story, to be able to sort of say it, and you don't have control over the process, then why are you doing it in the first place? How is your voice coming out now? People sort of seeing your voice. Part of me was, was that, so I was like, okay, I really want to tell a coming of age, this coming of age story. Which was again a mixture of, just like our Jubilee's 20 years of just those stories. That was also, you know, the literature you've read when you, while growing up, movies you've watched and um, 400 Blows and Richard Price's books and a lot of those kind of things which right. sort of like, you know, come into Catch It In The Rye and... Yeah, you know, I, it's interesting you say that because I get a sense uh, from the interviews I read of yours of actors who work with you that you actually tell them something which is an existing piece of work as, sub, as to use as a reference point. Like I think Prasenjit in Jubilee says that you told him Godfather. I told him, I said, Marcelo Masterani. I'm saying that's the okay. that's the look feel that I that I kind of had for him. But in my mind, yes, it's the it's it's. That Masterani like, from which from from La Dolce from eight and a half. Hey, from eight and a half. From okay. eight and a half. Right. But just the look that he had in eight and a half. Right, right. But his the reference that I said, okay, it's I said it's it's uh, it's Michael from The Godfather Two. Mm. The waistcoats, the sleeves, the thing, the way that he holds himself in in that the hero of his own story. Right, it's it's that it's that Michael. It's not the younger. What Michael did you tell? Uh, did you tell Catcher in the Rye uh, to the lead in Udan? To Rajat. Rajat? Uh, no, I made him read Catcher in the Rye, which interestingly I gave him the book then in which he read last year. What? <laughs> yeah, and he finally posted it. No, what I made him do, what I made Rajat do is uh, I made him watch. Uh, How movies. old was he then at the time when you offered him the film? He was twenty. Yeah, okay, twenty is fine to read Catcher in the Rye because it can mess with your head. Yeah. 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 No, no, and I, I gave him, I made him watch a bunch of movies. I made him watch Ken Loach's Sweet Sixteen. I made him watch uh, The 400 Blows, mm. uh, Eight Mile. Mm. You know, a lot of like coming of age angsty films. I said, just see these character journeys, see how that kind of stuff was. I did that with him. I made him, I made him do physical training. I was like, because like he, he, I'm saying here, he's supposed to be playing a, you know, a boarding school kid who mm. generally like, they're physically really fit because they're playing sports right. all the time. Yeah. He was this very gangly Delhi guy, you know, who had never played a sport in his life. So one of the first things I was like, physical training, just next three months you're just doing that. And I think that was the best thing because it, you, you could see the guy transform in, yeah. in three months. And I gave him a bunch of music, which for me has always been a source of inspiration. I gave him um, a lot of Springsteen, uh, a lot of Dylan, a lot of like the rock music that I grew up listening to, the sort of like, which kind of creates the... Did you model this guy on, on yourself? Sort of. Ah, uh, no. Not, not at all. No, I'm also asking you this because, uh, become like most people, and as you rightly pointed out, I mean, you could be completely in an insulated film uh, background where your all your inspirations also come from films. But what I find surprising of someone who's entirely grown up in Bombay to sort of uh, think of a story which is really entirely about Jamshedpur, really. Uh, and about a father who works in a small town. Why would you go that direction? Like, that's not the world you know really well. No, but I do. So what, what, I, I, the, the reason is because my father's uh, factory used to be in Nasik. And Nasik was very much like Jamshedpur. Or like an industrial small town back then. The people you socialized with all had their little, you know, plants or factories or whatever they, they, they would. And nice little bungalows. Nice little bungalows that you sort of like live in. The, the town is very organized and that kind of stuff. So I wrote it as a... Generic. In fact, when I wrote Udan, mm. like I, I knew that world. I know that sort of like factory social. So I knew that world really well. So I, I wrote, I wrote it for a north. I said, okay, I can't write it for Nasik. It's too close to home. I don't want to be mm. that. So I wrote it for like a Faridabad, Ghaziabad kind of sort of like setup. Outskirts of Delhi. Mm. So the family lives in the outskirts of Delhi. They come to Delhi. The boy sneaks out, comes into Delhi proper to party and mm. stuff. Um, Imtiaz read the script and he's like, you know what? Just like, just take a train, go stay with my family go have a look at Jamshed. He said, because I'm reading this and all I can say is I can see the streets in this that you've like written that kind of stuff. Just go. 
and I was going to cast Imtiaz's younger brother Sajid at that point. Okay. And this was 2005. Hmm. So uh, I did that. Sajid and me hopped onto a train, went to Jamshedpur. I spent you know four or five days with his uh, family there. Um, saw the place. I'm like, this is great. This is actually hmm. this is perfect. Um, and then yeah, moved the film to uh, Jamshedpur. It didn't get made in 2005, right. which is a good thing actually. Right. Eventually, got made 2009 because by then the viewership had changed, the audience had changed. In 2005, multiplexes were still not what they are, what they were right. by 2010. So, Udan would have probably got made. Hmm. It would have got a matinee release somewhere. A few people would have seen it. Uh, as opposed to when it did come out, you know, UTV was there, you would get a 225 screen release, which is a big deal for a, right. for a small film. Also, like it was coming um, right after Cannes. That was exactly. a big moment for that you, That was a right? big, huge moment. Yeah. Right? I mean, if I'm not mistaken, you were in contention in that particular category, which is in certain regard, with uh, Godard. Godard. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very trippy. It was very trippy. <laughs> yeah, so that, that it just, it, 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 came at the, it came at the right time, which has kind of been story of my life. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.